Greetings and welcome to a new video about electric circuits. In this example, two about Thevenin's theorem. I will discuss another circuit to illustrate the concept of Thevenin's theorem and also Thevenin equivalent circuit. Of course, we will look at our calculations step by step and also verify these in SPI simulations. So let's look at the circuit. We have this circuit given, which is called the Wheatstone bridge can be used for some sensor applications. And we have a DC voltage source PS here, which is 100 volts. We have five resistors, R1, R2, R3, and R4. Those are here, the values, and also a load resistor of 50 ohms. Now using Tefanen's theorem, we would like to calculate the current and also the voltage for the load resistors, resistor RL. Now in this case, the voltage is oriented in this format, so we have the plus and the minus sign, and there is a current flow from plus to minus, and that is the load current IL. And the voltage is then also between plus and a minus. So how do we work this out? There are many methods to work this out. Let's, before we do that, also designate the plus and the minus for the other uh, resistors. So we call this the current I1 for R1, and for R3, I will designate it like that. For R4, I will do it like that. This is just a random choice. You can choose anything else and it will also work fine. You will get the exact same results. Okay, now this is the choice I have now made. Now for our uh, analysis, it's also handy to give the nodes a name. So I have this node an X and this will be a Y in my case. So just a name. How do we work this out? Let's look at our steps. Step one is remove the load resistor because that is actually where the information must be. So we need to have the current and the voltage. So we need to remove that from the circuit. So that means actually the following. Just take it out and leave R1, R2, R3 and R4 and also the voltage source Vs in the circuit. Now you can re uh, redraw this. It will be easy for the next uh, steps for our analysis. And then draw the circuit like that. Now you can see directly actually why this is uh, handy because now you see actually two branches that are parallel. So R1 and R2 are in series and R3 and R4 now are in series and they are now also in parallel. So we can say Vs is parallel to R1 and R2 in series and also R3 and R4 in series is parallel to the voltage source Vs. Now we would like to calculate the current and the voltage for the load resistor. Now what the Tefanen theorem says is you need the Tefanen voltage and also the Tefanen resistance. So the second step is actually determine the Tefanen voltage which is for short VTH. And that's actually between these two nodes. So node X and Y I have designated already here. So that is the same node here, also the same node here. So in order to calculate the VTH Tefanen, I can say, let's calculate Vx, that is the voltage at node X, and also at node Y, and then subtract this from each other. So you can say Vx minus Vy, that will be your Tefanen voltage. Just the analysis in this form. So node voltage at the point X minus the node voltage at the point Y. So I can use then voltage divider rule for this circuit by saying the voltage at node X with respect to ground, of course, it will be then R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vs. That is Vx. And if you now also do that for the point Y, you will get R4 over R3 plus R4 times Vs. So you get again, actually the voltage divided rule for this node. If I now substitute the values given here, so 600 for R2, R1 plus R2 will be 700 times 100, you will get 600 over 7 for the exact value that will be approximately 85.71 volts. In a similar form, you do that for the Vy, and you will get 200 over 3, an exact value that will be approximately 66.67 volts. Now we have actually our V Tevenin voltage almost, we know the Vx and also Vy, so let's then use this formula and then subtract it from each other you will get 400 over 21 exactly that was approximately 19.05 volts okay we have now done the tefanen voltage let's now go to tefanen resistance that is the second part of it and then actually complete your tefanen equivalent resist uh, circuit so determine the tefanen resistance which is denoted by rth 
Now you exactly use the same circuit actually, so redrawing this without of course the load, you look between the node X and Y. Now you, what you need to do is of course if you look between these two nodes, X and Y, you need to short actually the input voltage or you disable all the independent sources. In this case we have only one and for the independent DC voltage source you will short it. That means actually the following circuit will then result. So you can actually see this is a short, you still have actually your four resistors. Now what does it mean? How can I now determine the resistance between the point X and Y? Now we can see that easily when I again redraw this circuit in this form. Now what you actually see is the following. You actually see R1 and R2 actually effectively parallel. Because this node is connected here to X. And this node here, the top side of R1, is connected to the bottom part of R2. So they are actually connected now in this form. So this, this is actually this connection. So this connection. This is actually similar for R3 and R4. So R3 and R4 is also parallel. So they are also parallel and are connected actually in between to point Y. So what you actually have in order to calculate the resistance between point X and Y, this is actually looking here up or between these, it's also looking here. So instead of looking like that, you can also look to the left for this circuit. And that will be then our definite resistance given here in green. Okay, now we get the following. The parallel combination of R1 and R2 plus the parallel combination of R3 and R4. That's actually shown here. And if I now write down this R1, R2 parallel combination, also R3 and R4 parallel combination in a formula form, you will have this uh, expression. Now, substitute the given values for this example. You will have this, so 100, 600, etc., 400 and 800 for the resistors, R1 up to R4. Now, when I work this out, I will get exact value 16, 600 over 7 plus 800 over 3, and it will be approximately 352 ohms. So I have now also my resistance for the Tefanen equivalent circuit. So this will be then uh, used later in our uh, analysis. Now we need to form now the Tefanen equivalent circuit using the VTH and also the RTH. We know these two values we have determined. So the voltage of the Tefanen circuit and also the resistance of the Tefanen circuit. This is all determined. This is then actually the equivalent circuit of this given circuit originally without considering actually the load. So without the load, you have actually this uh, circuit with a voltage source in series with a resistance. So this is the Tefanen voltage, this is the Tefanen resistance. What we want is of course the current through the RL, the load, and also the voltage across it. So we need to connect now the load resistors, rows resistor, to this circuit. So we connect actually between the point X and Y, RL. Then you get actually this circuit. Now you get actually again a very simple circuit. That's also the power actually of Tefanen's theorem. Now we can apply here the for the current and also for the voltage the current divider rule. So in order to calculate VL, I can say VL is equal to RL over R Tefanen plus RL times the V Tefanen. Now I know everything actually. So I can say 50, which is the load resistor, divided by the 352 plus 50 times the Tefanen voltage. That will give me 2.37 volts. Now, in order to calculate the current, IL here, you can use Ohm's law, that is straightforward because we already have the voltage. We can say IL is equal to VL over RL, 2.37 I must say, over 50, that is then 47.4 milliamps. So I have actually the information required for this exercise, the current and also the voltage for the load resistor. These are shown here. Now let's summarize, summarize now the result. We have actually this circuit what we can draw in the simulator. It is also a little bit drawn differently, again in the parallel format, not in this, let's say, triangle form. And these are the results. So we can see in the simulation the following. I can see the I underscore RL, that is actually between 2 and 3, the current is 47.3 approximately, which is very close to what we had, was 47.4 milliamps. 
We also see the voltage V underscore RL again between three and between two and three is 2.367, very close to 2.37 volts we have calculated. Now this circuit, this, this is the original circuit from the given circuit here, and this is the Tevenin equivalent circuit. So this is actually the simplified version. So again, a voltage source here, 19.05, that was a Tevenin voltage. And we have also Tevenin resistance we have calculated. Now I connect now between the point X and Y, this load. So then we get the following. You can see now I R R L between point X and zero, that's actually ground. You see again 47 point approximately four. It's a little bit different, of course, that is due to the rounding of errors, but you see that they are very close to each other. You also see actually the voltage. So the voltage here, V underscore R L is 2.369 or almost 2.37. So again, we see that the voltage and the currents for the original circuit and a Tevenin equivalent circuit using our load between the point X and Y are very close to each other. And that's actually the way to, let's say, uh, make a simplification in, our, in your circuit and then work out the analysis required. Now, these are the Tevenin and the Tevenin voltage and Tevenin resistance. And these were the result for the load voltage and load current. Now, we will also look at the actual simulator and also show you that this is indeed correct. So this is the original circuit and this is the definite equivalent circuit, this part and also this is the load. So let's now jump to the simulator and also see how we can generate these tables and see also uh, there uh, these values are correct there. So let's jump to the SPI simulator. All right, now we are now in the SPI simulator, already prepared the circuit. This is the original circuit. So here we have the 10, 100 volts for the VS and also the R1, R2, R3 and R4. And we have our load resistance. This is the Tevenin equivalent circuit. So, and then there we have connected our load of 50 ohms. Now what we have determined was this circuit will give through this uh, resistor RL exact same voltage and also the exact same current as this cir uh, circuit here. So we can see that. Go to analysis, DC analysis, and then, for example, do calculate node voltages. If I now click on this with my pen here, so you can see also the values here, click on it, you can see 2.37 approximately volts and 47.3 or 47.34 milliamps. So very close to what we have calculated as 47.4 milliamps. If I now go here, that's the Tefanen equivalent circuit. You can see it is also 2.37 approximately and also the current is very close to what we have calculated. You can see this circuit originally is similar to this circuit using Tefanen equivalent circuit. The power of that one is this circuit using equivalent circuit of Tefanen is that you have a very simplified circuit and you actually can see directly how much current and how much voltage you have in your load. Another advantage of this type of circuit representation is that you can calculate how much actually this load must be to have the maximum power transfer. Because we know for a maximum power transfer that the load must be exact same as this resistance, Tevenin resistance in the, let's say in a DC domain. And if you go to the AC domain, then you have the, the impedance here, the load impedance must be equal to the complex conjugate of the Tevenin impedance shown here. But that is actually a later issue. That is another, uh, let's say, powerful uh, usage of Tevenin's theorem. All right, guys, this is for example number two about the Tevenin's theorem applied for a DC electric circuit. If you have any questions about this exercise, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible.